Hi and welcome to the video, thanks for tuning in. In this lesson I'm going to be discussing Freight Train written by Elizabeth Cotton in uh, the 1920s. She originally wrote it as a folk song um, and to me it's, it's a beautiful song, genius uh, melody that fits over the chords and the harmony and the structure of the song in a beautiful manner. You should definitely check out her version, uh, the original version, you can find it on YouTube. The lesson is divided into uh, segments. The first segment is going to be about just the chords, getting to know them, and then the melody with the chords. Then we're going to look at the boom check and how to produce that alternating bass sound uh, the way Tommy does. Afterwards we're going to connect it with the melody. And then I'm going to give you some licks and ideas um, which you can use inside a tune or you know in just any configuration that works with the licks harmony wise. Um, so let's get started. Alright, so in the first segment we're going to have a look at the chords. We start off with a C onto a G7, a D minor 7th going into a G. Now this G is not a regular G, it's a G 7th, 9th, 13th. And then back to a C chord. From there we're going to an E. Now, uh, the melody is going to require for you to play the F note. And that F will give you basically an E flat 9th, an altered chord. Onto an A minor 7th. An A minor 7th with the G bass. And then an F. Now again, this F is not your regular everyday shape. Uh, we basically play a triad on the 4th, the 3rd and 2nd string, you know, the F, the A and the C note. And then we add the thumb uh, over the 6th string holding down the F note. Okay, uh, this is uh, very important for this particular style uh, for finger picking. So uh, if you're not familiar with it, I suggest that you work on it. You know, just try different chords on, on the neck. From there, we'll go on to a, a B seventh with an F sharp in the bass, and then back to a G, and on to a C. Okay, so now that you know the chords. Let's have a look at the melody played together with the chords. Alright, so we have the chords, we have the melody, let's have a look at the alternate bass technique. Um, the first thing you want to do is place the palm of your hand, this part, on the saddle. And what you want to do is you want to mute the strings, but you don't want to kill it completely. Now this is not this sound, alright, we're talking about this sound. And the difference is, is that here we have some sustain left. The note is not dead, you can still hear it. It's muted just enough to give it definition. And it's in between this and this, which yields nothing. But if you place it just in the right spot, you'll get enough sustain for it to ring and to be clear. And that's the definition that we're looking for. Now, on each chord, we're going to be playing the root and we're going to alternate the root with the fifth. Okay, onto the D minus seventh, onto the G. Now, on this particular G, I'm playing just a six and a four, okay? I don't have the fifth string to alternate with. And then back to the C. Now, here I did a little pass from, from the C to the E chord. So what I did there, in terms of time, if you count it, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I've added the G and the F note on the second bar on the third and fourth quarter. So again, slowly, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
and then onto the E. The E will be a 6, 4, 5, 4 pattern, so... Okay, and then on to the A minor 7th. Now here, because the chords are changing, it's going to be 5, 4, and then a 6, 4. But this time, remember, the chord has changed. The bass was A here, and then here the bass is G. So we have an A minor, an A minor with the 7th in the bass, the G, and then an F. This F also gets a 6, 4 pattern. And then we have the B7th with the F-sharp, which gets a 6-4 as well. And then the G, also a 6-4. And then back to the C. Okay, so I'm going to put it together for you slowly, so you can follow. One, two, three, four. Onto the G7th. D minor, G seventh, a C, an E, A minor, seventh, F, B, G, and then back to the C. Okay, and while you're doing this, you can basically rest your fingers here. And then just just get used to the bass with your thumb. Okay, this motion has to be sort of uh, built in. You don't have to think about it. It has to be like almost automatic with every chord you do. Okay, for this next part, we want to take the melody and play it together with the alternating bass that we just did before. Now this is tricky because you have to do several things and be aware of several things at once. The first thing is that the melody has to ring. The melody has to be like a separate voice from whatever's going on with the alternating bass and you want to make it uh, musical alongside with, with the alternating bass, you think. Think of it like, like, uh, uh, like someone is playing the bass guitar and you're playing the melody with the guitar. Now, that being said, it still has to be um, played as if it's one thing, like, like a band that sounds good, you know. And then on to the G. On to the D minor. And to the C. Going to the E. And then on to the A minor. Notice when I go to the bass with my third finger here, again there's an alternating uh, melody note which does not land on beat. And that's the D right there on the second string. Okay, same thing with this B. So slowly the whole section. Before I go into the G, I play the third note and then go into the G. Okay? Again, I'm going to play that section because it's a little bit complicated. I'm going to play it slowly. And then to the G, back to the C. Okay, so now I'm going to play the whole thing one time slowly for you so you can see the context of the melody and the alternate bass in the whole song.
Okay, so here's the first lick I use in the intro. Okay, interesting thing to note about here is that each three notes, each batch, starts with a, a chord tone. The G, the D, the F, the seventh, and then back to the G. Sort of spelling out a twisted uh, G7 because I'm using the, the C note there, which is the eleventh. Okay, and here's the second lick I played at the end of the intro. Okay, sort of like a blues ending. Now you can use this lick in between at the intro, at the end. You know, you can fit it in wherever you feel uh, it's right for you musically. Okay, another lick was in between the first and second chorus. It goes like this slowly. And in context like this. The final lick I use is a familiar Chad Atkins, Tommy Emanuel lick. And it goes something like this slowly. Notice I'm using hybrid picking, which means I'm using the pick on my thumb and my first finger to uh, execute this lick. Again, slowly. So thanks for watching the lesson. I hope this was helpful to you and that it will get you going in finger picking uh, and that it will get you inspired to look for your own things and to uh, dig deeper in this style of music, particularly in Tommy Emanuel as well. Thank you. Take care.